Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer and this is Spectacular Yarns podcast episode number three. You can find me on Ravelry at Jen Crafts, on Instagram at Jen underscore crafts. You can find my hand dyed yarn company Spectacular Yarns on Instagram and Facebook at Spectacular Yarns, my website SpectacularYarns.com and we also have a group over on Ravelry Spectacular Yarns. I will link everything down below. Um, today's Saturday, February... 29th it is it's it's a leap year so it's the 29th today and I'm coming to you from Colorado Springs it is a really really beautiful day it is 51 degrees outside right now which is perfect um also I have exciting news um exciting for me and my family and I, I haven't been able to share it um but I'm gonna be an aunt I got this mug from my sister that says best thea ever and my sister actually just announced it to everybody on social media just a few hours ago. So I could officially put it out there. Um, I will say that there has been and will be baby knits. I, I can't share anything yet because then sh my sister will see it and their gifts. But I will be sharing them um, in the near future. So let's get into it today. I am really excited that it's Saturday. I have crafting plans tonight um and it should be it should be a pretty chill weekend so i'm really excited about that i went to the yarn shop earlier my local yarn shop you and me um it's a great yarn shop and they had a 20 percent off sale today because of it's a leap day um so i thought that was awesome of course i had to go um and it was perfect because there is a project that i wanted to start and i knew exactly what yarn I wanted um it was a matter of just choosing the colorway but I knew exactly and I'll talk about that later but it was just the perfect opportunity I went and did that today and it's been just a really really good day okay so let's get into it I have my notes here try to be a little bit more organized as always I will have everything linked down below I will have a link to the show notes um that I post on the Ravelry um group and hopefully um I don't forget anything and if I do always comment down below and let me know okay let's start with finished objects because I do have a finish and it is something that I cast on after the last episode so you wouldn't have seen them and I have my Ravelry project page up so I remember the information but this is the finish wait <laughs> okay they're mitts, which this is the first time that I've done mitts. Well, I've tried before and I struggled with DPNs a few months ago, probably like six months ago. Um, but I was able to do it this time. And by the way, I'll talk about that later. That's from an IV. But anyway, so I love these. This is DK weight. Um, and there's definitely modifications. Uh, I was very enabled by Savannah, my friend Savannah. She has a YouTube here, um, and I will link her down below. She does. Um, she has a knitting podcast as well, so please go check her out. Um, but she made some mitts. Th these are the world's simplest mittens by Tin Can Knits, and they're supposed to be mittens, so not not open. I'll show you a picture really quick. See if you could see that. So you can see the ring light. Okay, so there you go. However, um, my friend made these and I like that she had them open like this because you could just fold it down and you have, you know, you could use your fingers, you could use your phone, whatever you need to. But if you're cold, you just kind of roll them up and, you know, they're perfect for driving and just, you know, if you're really cold, you could kind of like bunch your hand in here and I just thought they were perfect. Um, they're a little big, but I kind of like them. They were cozy. Um, at first I was like, oh man, they're too big. Um, but I actually learned to really, really like them kind of big like this. I will say I will try to make a medium size. This is large. I will try to make the medium next time because I really do want to make some more of these and maybe even the regular mittens also. Um, but yeah, I, I really, really love these. Um, so what I did is I followed the pattern exactly. 
um, except for once once you separate for the thumb, I just knit up until my fingers reach my hand. Okay, hold on. So I just knit up to here, right? And then I did one by one rib for as long as I wanted it. I just kind of went to a little bit below my ring finger. So that that is it. And I just, I love them. The yarn is by Explorer Knits in her Sorcerer's Stone colorway. And it's her Harry Potter collection. I love this color so much. Um, and this is 100% Superwash Merino, I believe. So I got those done relatively quickly because I just wanted to wear them. And of course, it's, it's 50 degrees now, so I'm not wearing them. But... Um, I'll, I definitely will be in a few days. It's supposed to start snowing again here. So I saw on Facebook the other day, it said Colorado feels like a snow globe. Somebody keeps shaking it. That's so true. It's like, it snows a lot and then it kind of calms down and then it stops and then it just happens again and again and again. Okay. What's next? Uh, let's see. Okay. Last time I recorded... Um, I mentioned that I was going to the yarn shop to meet my friend Savannah and I was taking my beanie that I was working on um, and when I was there she had started a beanie. She had just started it I think that same day or the day before or something but she enabled me to start that same beanie. <laughs> so then and there I bought yarn and cast it on that beanie. And I only worked on it like that day and I haven't worked on it since um, but I do really want to finish it I think it's this one here yep so this is called my favorite weekend hat by Natasha Sills and it is it kind of looks like brioche but it's it's not 100% brioche. It is um, kind of like a version of, I don't know how to explain it. I think she actually explains what it is here. Um, let's see. No, but I know that she explains it on Ravelry, um, but it does kind of look like brioche. Let's see here. It gives you kind of like a, a brioche look and it is just awesome. I'm using Malabrigo Rios in the color Cumparsita. There we go. And it's a really pretty like burgundy black color, I would say. Um, I really am enjoying it. I just need to, oop, I almost lost a stitch. Um, I just need to really, um, get back to it. Um, I will say the pattern is a little confusing. Um, the terminology on here, like it says, slip one, yarn over, dash P, and what that means is just that you're slip you're slipping one and yarning over above the row that has a purl under underneath and then there's also a slip one yarn over knit so you're doing that on the row above the the knit stitch below if that makes sense it's just kind of I, I finally figured it out but it really just means slip one yarn over with yarn in front but it is a good pattern um, I do really really like it and um savannah already finished hers and the fit is great on her and i'm hoping that the fit is going to be just like that on me just very fitted not slouchy um i do like slouchy and fitted but i feel like i like fitted a little bit more like it's it's more wearable for me like i i lean toward that more so i'm hoping i'm hoping that that's gonna fit really really well um okay let's see what else um I will also show the progress of the beanie that I was doing. 
uh, when I went to the yarn shop last time. This is what I was supposed to be working on and I haven't really worked on it much. <laughs> um, but this is, let me see here. The Classic Cuffed, cuffed Hat by Pearl Soho. Right there. I'm sorry, I'm trying out this ring light and I do really like it, but it does, get, um, I can't wear my glasses because there's a huge glare. Um, so just bear with me. So this is where I'm at. I do have a good amount of progress, um, but this whole rib section folds up. And so I have a long way to go still. Um, it's a very, very basic hat. It's also fitted, which I'm excited about. I'm using Malabrigo Rios again. Rios is their worsted um, line, I'm pretty sure. And Cirrus Gray, which is a really pretty like blue gray color. It looks definitely more um, blue in my opinion. It's a very wearable, beautiful, variegated blue, and I really, really enjoy it. If you've never used Malabrigo Rios, it is a really great, um, more affordable option. Um, I think they're like 16 to $18 for the worsted, and they're good quality. Um, so I highly, highly recommend Malabrigo if you've never used it. So, there's that one. I'm really, really enjoying it. I just, I just want to work on everything and I can't get to everything and I need to stop casting on stuff, but I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. Oh, I forgot to put the pattern in there. Let's see what else. What else have I worked on? Mm -hmm. Oh, Okay, so I have another <laughs> new cast on and really, really excited. I don't think I showed it last time. I think I cast it on after the last video. Um, but I'm so excited about it, guys. I'm so excited about it. So again, my friend Savannah, she... Um, posted a knitting podcast I think it was her first one a few weeks ago and she talked about how she started a sweater called the Sunday the Sunday Ooh, what is it called I think it's called the Sunday sweater I think that's what it's called um, and I loved it and I, I was like so tempted to um, to make it also. So then I started looking on Petite Knits website for the Sunday sweater. And then I saw that they had a Sunday cardigan. And I absolutely loved it. And I was like, okay, it uses, it uses lace and worsted. So it uses a worsted with a mohair, I think. Yeah, it uses worst, um, worsted with a mohair equivalent to like a bulky. Um, and I knew that I had a bulky weight yarn already, but I didn't have enough of it. And so I was like, if I could get more of the same one, I, it might be able to work. So that's what I did. I bought more. <laughs> more yarn and I cast it on so first let me show you the yarn that I'm using it is beautiful it is ply mouth yarn Ariado it's 70% baby alpaca 7% merino wool and 23% nylon it is in the color denim I believe made in Peru 100 grams 283 yards and yes, it's in light denim. 
So I had two of these and I think I'm still kind of getting used to like figuring out the math for yarn and stuff. Um, I think I need four of these. And so I had two of them, but one of them was already being used for a project. I wasn't like super far into it, but I talked about it in my first knitting podcast. I had cast it on the um, Gaptastic Cowl, which is a really great pattern. It's just like a, a seed stitch. Um, and that's what I was using this for, but I wasn't far into it. And I was like, well, I could just um, frog that project out and then use that, um, use that yarn because that way it'll be more affordable if I just have have to buy two more of these yarns um, and these aren't like super super expensive I think they're about 20 21 dollars at the yarn shop um, and I really really wanted to do it so that's what I did I did a gauge swatch a few of them because I couldn't hit gauge and I was really concerned because it has a good amount of alpaca and alpaca tends to grow a lot um so it's kind of like what I did I did a few different sizes and then I did another one um but what I found is that the width kind of shrinks a little bit but then um but then it, it grows and it's really hard to swatch because I looked into it and it grows after you wear it with the weight of it with having a lot of it it starts to grow a lot and when it grows this way it kind of shrinks this way and so basically I, I got as close as I could like I found the needle size that I thought was gonna be the best it calls for a US 10 and Let me see. So it calls for a US, yeah, a US 10, and I'm using a US 8, I believe. Um, but I still feel like I'm kind of going in a little blind because I'm hoping that it's gonna grow like I'm planning. Because if it doesn't, then it might not fit. <laughs> um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm a little worried about it, but I'm hoping it's going to work out. Um, and let me show you. I haven't even showed you where I'm at. You're probably screaming at me. I'm sorry. Okay, so let me show you. Last night, I separated for the sleeves and I was really excited. So this is where I'm at. Um, the, the color is Kind of hard to show this is true to color right here i would say um this is coming out a lot darker but this is the color and it is beautiful it's so soft and squishy um i love it and this here is where the the top collar will be folded down to so i've never done it before um but I'm sure there's instructions toward the end. So this gets kind of folded downward and it's like a double collar, I think. I don't know if I'm gonna, I might just leave it like this. I'm not sure yet, um, but that's it. And I separated for the sleeves. Um, I'm hoping it's gonna fit. I feel like it's a little tight on the arms. Um, like I've tried it on and stuff and I mean obviously you can't like really try things on because they're kind of on cables and stuff which by the way these are the first time this is the first time that I'm using these cables I think they're by Clover and they're um, to hold um, for this exact purpose to hold um, stitches um, live stitches so I feel like it's kind of preventing like I like the idea um, but I feel like they're kind of preventing me, you know, with the waist yarn, you could kind of like really stretch and get a really good idea if it's going to fit. Um, so I'm tempted to remove these and just put in a waist yarn 
and try it on again before I get too far because I'm I don't know it like if if this doesn't fit is there a fix for that right if you like knit the whole body and then the, the sleeves don't fit is there even a way to fix that <laughs> that sounds like a nightmare like you just knit the whole body for no reason um I'm not sure if if you're new to the channel I haven't been knitting for too long it's been less than a year so I'm I'm still new to to everything um so I don't know if if you're familiar let me know if the sleeves don't fit and I and I knit the whole body am I screwed like do I have to frog the entire body to get back to cast on some extra stitches because that's scary like if that happens if that's the case then I might just put the waist yarn and um and just add some more I'm assuming that you can do that right you could just add more um cast on a few more stitches here so anyway that's where I'm at I am loving it I love working with this yarn I will say the only thing that I do not like is that this yarn um gets stuck in every single little cuticle I swear I sit there with my cuticle cutter and lotion <laughs> when I'm working on this it's so irritating um, and then I just like it clings to stuff and it starts pulling and starts like getting messed up and um, I still love it though. I don't regret working with this yarn at all. I, I absolutely love it and I can't wait to get more done. Um, I will say that I'm noticing holes in the make ones and um, and I forgot to talk about it. The mitts that I made earlier, I made one mitt with, um, I'm getting off track, I'm sorry, but um, I made one mitt with a different type of make one. I did a lifted, I think it's called a lifted increase left leaning and then a lifted increase right leaning versus a make one left, make one right. Make one left and make one right. You use the middle bar in between the stitches and you lift it to make either a left or a right leaning increase. But the the lifted increase, and it, it's hard to explain if you're familiar, you know, you might know what I mean. Um, instead of using that middle bar between the two stitches, you use either the left, um, the, you use the row below, like one of those stitches and you lift it, depending on which way you want it to go. I hope I'm making sense. I will link a video down below on what I'm referring referring to. But supposedly the lifted increases are supposed to be better that they don't um they don't really leave the hole like the make one left and make one right. Um so I did one glove one way and the other glove and the regular make one right make one left that I usually do. And I will say I feel like the I feel like there's more holes in the lifted increase when I feel like there's not supposed to be. So I went back and I rewatched a few videos and I'm doing it right. I mean, I think I'm doing it right. So let me try to show you. So over here, you could, you could see, right? The dots right there, right there, right there. You could see those increases. This is using the lifted increase method. And then this one, I did the first one as a lifted increase. And then after I did the first one, I was like, I should try to do it the other way, the regular way and compare it. And I don't see as many holes, right? Like I see that first one, like right there. But these, I don't really see that which is really interesting to me. Um, I could see one right there and right there, but I see more on this one. Um, like I clearly see them here, right? So I just thought that was interesting. If you have any advice on that, if you know what I'm talking about and you've tried both ways and you have any input at all, let me know if there's one that you feel like makes bigger holes because I was trying to increase without making big holes, but um, 
yeah that didn't that didn't go very well um also going back to the mitts because i forgot to mention something um i was having a hard time with the thumb i've never done mitts before but i was having um a hard time trying to figure out what the best way the best method was to pick up the thumb stitches and um kind of like join them up and have the least amount of holes um because from my understanding there's always going to be a little bit of holes and you could you know at the end you go in there and you kind of weave um the end tail to kind of close up any little holes um but i was getting big holes in the beginning and i was like how can i prevent this from happening and I kind of got frustrated and I almost just said F it and just I'll figure it out. And but then I was like, no, these are my first pair of mitts. I should put them aside. It was already getting late and I was wanting to finish. So I was kind of like antsy. Put them aside, work on them, work on them in the morning and really try to take my time and try to look for some videos and um, like actually try to learn how to do it properly. Right. So I like teach myself instead of just BSing it and then I dread it every time that I'm gonna make mitts no so I found a video it is by the chili dog and it was very helpful I found a lot of videos and I watched a lot of videos and I tried several methods I had to rip back several times hers was the one that worked perfectly for me um, I still made a few changes and I put on my projects page for these mitts exactly what I did so if you're having trouble with um, the thumbs, um, check out my notes because I have the video link and I even put like um, followed everything exactly up until this point and then this is what I did as well, like modifications. Um, and I thought that was super, like that video was super, super helpful. And I wrote everything down because I feel like next time when I do mitts, I'll go back to my notes and I'll be able to copy I'll, I'll be able to replicate what I did because I feel like I'm pretty proud of myself for my first mitts. I feel like the thumbs came out pretty good and on my Instagram I have um, and on my Ravelry project page I have close-up pictures of the thumbs and I mean I think I did pretty good for my first time. So you know I'm not in order here in this video but it's fine. <laughs> Back to this. Um, I don't know what else can I say about it. I think I'm done talking about this. Let me see if there's anything in the pattern itself that I want to talk about. Um, I'm knitting the size large. I don't know if I said that. Um, but my gauge was a little smaller than the large. So hopefully... It blocks a little bit bigger and fits me like a large. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. Nope, I don't think I have anything else to say. I think I kind of talked about everything. Um, I am meeting up with Savannah again this week and then I will go ahead and work on the body. It's just really easy. Stockinette now. Um, do you see all those holes? It's bugging me. Do those kind of come out when I block? hopefully um but yeah that that is my sunday cardigan and i'm really excited about that i just i want to be done with it i want to wear it i think it's going to be great to kind of toss over so many different things um so there's that now let's talk about something very frustrating. A new project, another new project. So, my husband, um, I've never, have I made him anything? No, I don't think I've ever like completely like finished a project and, and gave it to him. I've started socks for him. I've started the beanie. I've never finished anything for him. Now a sweater is a really big commitment and it's been months that um, we've just kind of been on a lookout, more so me, right? He's like, if you see a sweater pattern you think I might like, show it to me. 
well he's very picky <laughs> so I've seen a lot of sweater patterns but it's just they're either too much cables or too much detail like he likes very simple things I showed him a few simple um, sweaters but they have like the more opened um, neckline and he doesn't like that he likes kind of more of like a crew neck it's kind of hard to find um, like some people mentioned like the flax by Tin Kennets I think he wasn't a huge he said it was fine but he wasn't like a huge fan for that sort of commitment I told him you have to really love the sweater if I'm gonna commit to it I was showing him DK um, fingering I was showing him like just whatever sweater he likes basically and he happened to like a fingering waist sweater he really liked it he said that's the one and I was like okay lucky me it's fingering weight but it's fine it's fine if he's gonna love it and he's gonna take care of it I really don't mind doing it but I have been struggling guys I've been struggling <sighs> let's talk about the yarn first okay so the yarn um, I dyed and let me see do I have a swatch here he told me what he wanted he picked out some colors and I went with it okay and this is kind of what I came out with or came up with so there's like blues and teals in here and I think it looks really cool I'm trying to get like a true um it's it's a little lighter in person but this is more or less what it looks like and here is the cake there is like some more subtle blue, some more vibrant, like a cobalt blue, um, some deeper like forest green type color, just a little bit of everything. And I, I love the way it came out. He loved the way it came out. Um, so once I got the color down, then I dyed up four skeins for his sweater let it dry I mean this was a process right like I swatched I couldn't get the swatch for whatever reason I kept like the gauge kept going back and forth like I was just struggling with this finally got the swatch finally got the color I got everything dyed up ready to go skeined up um, two balls of yarn so that I can um, see they're slightly different um, so I could do helix knitting, which I had never done before. This was the first time I started doing that. Um, really easy. I'll talk about that in a bit, but, um, alternating skeins and I was just struggling and I, I'll tell you why in a second, but first let's talk about the colors. So, um, you can see that this one is a little bit darker than this one. If you're familiar with hand dyed yarn, you know that, um, hand dyers highly recommend that you um, alternate skeins and the reason being that each skein is unique these were made in the same pot yet this one I feel like has a little bit more blue and this one's a little more subtle um, I'm alternating and it looks great um, so if you buy any hand dyed yarn I highly recommend to always um, alternate skeins and what I did was a helix knitting which was actually pretty hard to find a video on. I feel like a lot of videos, um, it's most people use Helix knitting for color changing, like stripes and stuff like that. Um, but I, I did find one video um, and the purpose was to alternate skeins like this, like hand dyed yarn. So basically, um, it works for knitting in the round and and I'm still kind of learning, but I will link the video down below. But basically what you do is that every row, you're stopping three stitches before your last, um, where you stopped with your last ball, right? So you're every, um, every round you're stopping three stitches before, and then you're just picking up that other skein and going in the round three stitches before, pick up the other skein and you keep alternating it. And basically you, you're just, working backwards like you're working in a circle almost um you're working the yarn in a circle so there's never it never butts up in a line like you don't get that ridge that you would if you alternate skeins like at the beginning of the round you kind of get that ridge you never get that it's like invisible it's it's wonderful 
I did learn, however, you can't really do it when you're doing German short rows or any, any sort of short rows because you're going back and forth. It doesn't work, at least from what I, if, if you know how that works, but I don't, I don't think it works with that because you have to be going in the round. Um, so learn that the hard way. Um, so then I was like, okay, I have to rip back. It's fine. Um, my short rows, I was really struggling with them. So this um, project has been on timeout and let me explain why. Because of the short rows. <laughs> so this is where, where I'm at, <laughs> barely have anything. Um, I just did some ribbing and then I try to do short rows. I've done short rows before on a few things and it's never been an issue. It's usually pretty straightforward. However, the sleeves, excuse me, I, I just realized I didn't tell you what pattern this was. This is, sorry guys, <laughs> oh, I'm so bad at this. Are you guys still with me? Comment below if you're still with me. This is so ridiculous. <sighs> this project is hibernating. <laughs> is it even on here? Oh, geez. I don't even think I posted it on here because I was so upset at it. Oh, there it is. It is. It's hibernating. Um, this is the Sew Basic Sweater by Max the Knitter. It's called the Sew Basic Sweater. It has a pocket in the front. My husband doesn't want the pocket. Fine. Um... So there is a slight um, like ridge coming down the lines, like a few kind of like ridges or texture coming down the arm, not a big deal. It's kind of just like a um, combination of like knit and a little bit of pearl, knit a little bit of pearl, it gives you that texture, right? Not a big deal. I said, okay, uh, separate for the sleeves um, or when you start dividing, the front and the back is just stockinette and then there's a little bit of pattern on the sleeves. I I understand, I comprehend. Um, I've done short rows before. There's something about this pattern though. I, first of all, there there's two things that I was confused about. I got over the first hurdle after looking at comments, questions, reaching out to him, got over the first hurdle, ran into another. And I had to rip back like twice and i'm just not i don't know if it's just the way that the pattern is written or if it's just i mean i'm still a new knitter um but i have read this thing so many times and i just cannot get it it does not make sense to me um if you're familiar with sweaters um the short rows are in the back and it kind of goes back and forth and it it increases right um the patterns on the sides are just not lining up like it tells you to do a certain pattern and then do um wrap and turn come back and when you come back it's telling you to do a, a something different like the pattern does not line up to what it's supposed to be that's the first issue and then you come back and you come this way and you don't even come to the sleeve you just come right back how does that even make sense like you have to come all the way back to this sleeve to increase everything like it is just so confusing i don't know honestly what's going on um it, i just got extremely frustrated because i was so excited and it's a beautiful pattern and it's just not making sense to me it just it doesn't make sense and other people have finished this pattern so they must have figured it out i don't know if I'm just not understanding um, the way that it's written um, or I, I don't know I don't know but I am meeting up with my friend on Tuesday and hopefully she could help me um, I'm hoping she could figure it out for me if not then I might go to the yarn shop and ask for help but they charge hourly 
which is of course, um, you know, you pay for their time, which is fine. But I'm already so frustrated at this pattern that, and I say this pattern, that I don't, I don't know if there's anything wrong with the pattern. It could be written beautifully and it's just me. So I don't want to blame the pattern. Um, but I'm just already so frustrated with this project that I almost want to frog it and just do something else. Um, but I've already done so much. I swatched, I dyed yarn for it. I, I don't know. I'm not sure yet. This is just on timeout. <laughs> I'm going to take it on Tuesday, see if she could help me. And hopefully she can, because after that, it should be pretty easy going. It's just increases and it's just very simple let me show you another picture of it there's another picture of it and let me see if i can show you the sleeve detail so there is the sleeve detail very straightforward it's just knits and then a pearl knits and then a pearl but when you're doing the short rows the knits and pearls don't line up on the on the rows. They were supposed to line up so that you could keep the texture and it's just not doing it. <sighs> there really should be wine in here right now because it is Saturday night and it's six o'clock and I'm frustrated just by talking about it. Okay. Let's put it away because it's already just irritating me. Anyway. I'll keep you guys posted <laughs> with that. I really hope that we could just figure it out and I could just work on it. And I think my husband will really, really love it. <sighs> what else? Let me look at my stuff. Let's talk about, let's do a quick haul. So I do have a few things that I've purchased. Let me get it. Okay, so earlier I talked about the Sunday cardigan and how I had used the yarn initially for the Gaptastic cowl. Um, and I will link that down below. But I had frogged the yarn to use it for the Sunday cardigan. But I still loved the Gaptastic cowl. And I really wanted to do it still. And I wanted to use that yarn but maybe a different color and so when I went to the store I saw a color I really liked so I had to get it it is beautiful it's actually so beautiful that I kind of wish this was the color of my cardigan but it's fine I love blue and I'm happy with it but this is in the color rose and it is just the perfect it's a little more pink in person it's kind of coming up it's kind of coming out a little bit more tan it does have kind of like a tan undertone um but it definitely has a little more pink in person actually so i'm using a new ring light and it has a few different settings so i'm wondering if i could <laughs> it's definitely not better we're just gonna stick to that one guys um that's the closest we're gonna get um, but it is just beautiful so i'm gonna use this I'm not going to cast it on anytime soon, but this is going to be for the Gaptastic cowl. And I just got one. It should be enough. It's 283 yards. The cowl calls for, I think, a little over 300. But I'll just make, not, I just, I'll just, Jesus, I'll just make it a little bit less wide and it'll, it should be fine. So there's that. Oops. And then, um, and then I purchased, there was a trunk show a few weeks ago by the three Irish girls. And I got this color in Magnolia. And I just thought it was beautiful. I just thought it was adorable. I don't know, there's something about this pink. It's not like too girly and I love it so much. So I got that one and then Today they had a sale and I had to get another yarn. This is Emma's yarn in Hella Hank. And I love this color. This is called Once Upon a Time. It is an 80-10-10. 80% superwash merino, 10% 10 
cashmere and 10% nylon. It is a hella hank, and if you're not familiar, a hella hank is a hell a lot of yarn. <laughs> uh, usually fingering weight has meh, 450 to like high 400s of yards. Um, this has 600 yards. So it is almost like one and a half skeins, which is exactly what I need for a future cast on, which to be very honest, I'm trying not to cast on more things, but I have a really strong feeling that I'm gonna cast this on after I film this video. Cause I just got this and I'm really excited. So future plans, I guess. Let me show you what I wanna cast on because um, Tommy from I don't want to um, say the wrong channel. Hold on. From Dynamite Trujillo. She has a YouTube channel. I love watching her. She's so fun. Woo. So Dynamite Trujillo. I will link her down below. Um, she was working on this project that I'm about to show you and I loved it so much that I just, I started looking at what I needed and it said fingering weight and then it said um, that I needed, let me see. Okay, so it is a shawl. It calls for 560 to 600 yards and in my head I'm like, oh, darn, I hate, I don't hate it's just like one and a half skeins so you have to buy two of a fingering weight and then you have a lot of leftovers and I just hate having so much leftovers so I looked at what yarn they used and they used Emma's yarn hella hank and I have an Emma's yarn hella hank that I have in my stash but it's a solid blue and I just don't see it for this project. I don't see that color for this project. So this is the Gatsby Shawl by Don Henderson. And it is beautiful. It has bobbles. It has like a scalloped edge. Is that what that's called? Um, I absolutely, when I saw it, I was like, I need that. I need that in my life. I love it. And I wanted... I wanted to cast it on right away but I was like no Jen don't do it you have enough don't do it and then this morning the yarn shop on Instagram posted 20% off leap day and I was like that's a sign right because I just saw this shawl last night and I was like I have to have it and then and then I saw that on Instagram this morning and I was like well, it's, it's gonna happen, right? Um, let me just go see what color, um, what colors they have. So I was really um, tempted to do like a really bright, crazy one, but I think for this specific shawl, it's more like a classy with the the scallops and the bobbles. I just see it more like a more sophisticated shawl, and I think the muted um, kind of like pink. Um, I think this will be beautiful for that shawl, I'm hoping. Um, so I'm really, really excited about that. Um, and I think I'm gonna cast it on tonight. I know I shouldn't. I should probably work on my cardigan, but I have a sickness, guys. I have a sickness. Okay. Continuing with haul. You see how my podcast, I try to get it organized and it's kind of like all over the place i just got these in the mail um they're the Licka needles dpns in a us1 and the reason that i got these is because when i was working on my mitts my mittens um earlier or last week i guess or earlier this week i was using um Licka needles why can i open this I was using my Licka DPNs, which I have a few sizes of the Licka DPNs. I also have some Chai Gu or Chai, how do you pronounce that? I don't even know. Um, where are they at? So these are the wooden Licka needles. Um, I have 
two sizes here, but um, basically it's a five pack of DPNs and I think these are the six inch. Yeah, the six inch DPNs. And there's something so satisfying about these needles. I love them so, so much. And I was gonna do um, magic loop for my mitts, but I had the sizes that I needed and I said, screw it, I'm gonna try DPNs even though I'm not very comfortable with starting projects with DPNs. Usually I use DPNs for like um, decreasing for a beanie or something like that. Um, or I've used them for like sleeves, but I never really to start a project. I actually started some mitts last year with DPNs and I was struggling and I gave up and I never finished those mitts. I said, I'm gonna try it again. I have all the sizes that I need and I'm gonna try it. I ended up loving it. There's something satisfying about it. I don't know what it was. Um, so I, I was just tempted to buy a US one to try to make some socks. Um, now I love um, Magic Loop with socks, but I don't wanna just, you know, I, I don't, I just wanna branch out because what if I love this more and I don't realize it? Um, I don't know. So I'm just gonna try a sock with it. The reason I love Magic Loop is because you could do two at a time, which is what I'm doing. Um, but I don't know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just gonna try it and see how I like it and see if, um, if it's something that um, I can incorporate. Maybe sometimes I like Magic Loop, maybe, maybe sometimes I like DPN. So we'll see. I'll keep you guys posted, but I should not cast on any socks, um, but I have it ready to go. <clears throat> okay. Let's talk about one other thing. My friend Cassie, Cassandra, Cassie Stitches here on YouTube. She has a cross stitch channel, a floss tube channel, and I will link her down below. She does, she knits and she talks about it um, vaguely in some of her videos. Um, she enabled me to start doing some dish cloths. I don't know why, it was just very random and I just decided to start. So I um, I think this is the right side. So you can kind of see the pattern. Um, it's really hard to see the pattern with this variegated yarn. And this is a kind of a big dish cloth. Um, but I'm just, I'm trying to follow the pattern and the pattern that I'm using is called the Spa Day Face Cloth. And that's what it looks like. And since it's, um, since they're dish cloths, you wanna use cotton. Usually that's what you use. I think, I've never done dish cloth, so what am I talking about? I know for sure you use cotton, but I think you could also use like a type of bamboo and stuff too, but usually people go for 100% cotton from what I've seen in videos. So I just went out and I got some sugar and cream, um, just some fun colors. I only got two of these. Um, I've heard good things about these and I, I think it's just simply because of the price and because of the colors, because the yarn itself is really tough. Like it's very, um, I mean, I guess this would be good, kind of like hard material for a fa uh, like a dish cloth. So I, maybe, um, but it is kind of hard. I'm not a huge fan, but here's the color here. And this is in the color Coral Seas Ombre. That's what this is. Um, so, you know, I don't want to waste the yarn and I already started it. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish it. It should be a pretty quick knit and then I could just use it around the house. So I'm just going to get it done. Um, but I do find myself not like not working on this much simply because I, I'm not a huge fan of the yarn. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's certain things that it's good for though. Like I could see it good for a dishcloth. Um, so I am working on that, but I bought some more yarn for more dish cloths because that's what you do, right? Instead of just buying one and then just making a dish cloth at a time, you just buy one plus several more, right? Like that's normal. So let me show you what I have. So 
I got another sugar and cream. And honestly, I think I'm going to return this. Faded denim. Um, yeah, I have my receipt. And I mean, it was only a few dollars. But um, I'm really not enjoying the, the fabric too much. So I think I'm going to return this. Um, but I did get this which I might try um, it's not as hard it's more soft and this is the um, loops and threads cotton 100% cotton as well and it is gray and white and blue and there's like a whole bunch of colors like there's a purple and another blue Um, so it's just like a variegation of a whole bunch of different colors. Um, so I thought I would give this a try. I think it might be really cool. We'll see with that one. And then I also got, I went to the yarn shop for these because the, uh, the ones I just showed were from Michael's. And then I went to the yarn shop and asked like, what would you recommend for dishcloths? And so I got these bamboo pops and these are really soft and nice. 50% cotton, 50% bamboo. And they said that these are the most popular ones in the shop for dishcloths. Um, these seem thinner. It, yeah, it's a light, so it's like a fingering weight. Um, so I don't know, the pattern that I have is for, um, I think it's for wor um, worsted weight. So. I have to hold this double probably or I could just cast on more. I mean, it's just an easy pattern. Um, but these are the ones I got in the, the colors. Let me see if I have the colors on here. Grape dots and watermelon dots. So see, it's kind of like really, okay, there we go. So there's just like mint, orangey, like a coral and pink. And this one's just like a kind of like a hot berry pink and a purple. I'm really bad at describing colors. <laughs> so there's that. And then I also um, realized that I had, um, I don't have it here, I don't think. I realized that I had some yarn in my sash already. It's the Debbie Bliss DK and it's 100% cotton. And that one's really soft too. I didn't realize I had that. Um, I just randomly, like I was getting ready for bed. I had just laid down and I was just like, what the I think I have something. And then I came to the room and I checked and I did. So that's gonna be a dishcloth too. So a lot of dishcloths, I don't know why, because Cassie enabled me, I don't know. So now I have to make a whole bunch of dishcloths. Um, and then last is, I got these, uh, what are they called? Croy socks. And I've tried this brand before when I first started learning socks and I wasn't a huge fan, but I've heard so many people talk about how durable they are, how great they are, and I'm just gonna give it another try. Um, this is in cameo colors and I really like this color and I every time I go to the store, I eye this color. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna get it. Oh, I can try. <laughs> Don't do it right now, Jen, but I can try to use this with my DPNs. You know? Okay. <sighs> Where are my notes? Let's see. Okay, I think um, I think that's it for the haul. And now I just have a little bit of shop news. So, there was a new pattern that was released last week by Julianne. Hold on. Okay, Julianne Knitter on Instagram. And she released these beautiful, I'm gonna have to do something with this light guys. Nope.
maybe if I turn the light down okay so these beautiful like cabled mitts and she used the spectacular yarns which is my hand dyed yarn company spectacular yarns um color and cinnamon spice and I should have brought it in here let me grab it really quick okay I'm out of stock um in the fingering weight but here is a DK just to get an idea um it's just a really fun speckle neutral and I really really love the pattern so go over and check out Julianne Knitter I will leave her down below and I will also leave the cinnamon spice colorway you can um you know the pattern has it written in fingering weight held double you could always do it in just DK and see if that works as long as you hit gauge it shouldn't be an issue um but I it's a beautiful color and if you're into neutrals definitely a way to go so thank you Julianne for collabing with me it was really so much fun and the mitts are absolutely beautiful I can't wait to make them okay next um spectacular yarns was um given the opportunity to be part of the swapless swap that the um crazy sock lady hosts which i'm really really excited about um so the swap if you're not familiar see i printed out a paper here if you're not familiar it is a 40 yard swap and the cost is 35 dollars for us residents um $40 for Canada residents and pretty much all other international res residents the cost is $45 and that includes shipping so the reason there are um, different difference in um, prices are is because of the shipping so um, the um, let's see do, 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 do. money is due by March 31st so basically um you go say that you're interested you pay through paypal this is all on ravelry under the on the crazy sock later ladies group and it's just under swapless swap and i will link it down below if you're interested but basically you will get 10 40 gram minis of spectacular yarns and surprise colors and i'm really really excited i have been working on that and just kind of preparing for for it and i'm just so excited and i'm so thankful for this opportunity so if you are interested in getting 10 minis then please head on over sign up um the last day to sign up is march 31st and then i think everything will ship by the end of april and then you should receive them by the beginning of may um so that's kind of how that works so head on over there i'm really really excited about that i will also link the crazy sock ladies um video down below where she kind of um, talks about the swapless swap so what else few new colors that i released the past a few weeks so the first one is heart of steel which is a very beautiful steel blue color a little bit no that's about true to color i feel like it's yeah a little bit darker kind of like there it's just called heart of steel i love it it has some black speckles if you could see that kind of closely it's just a variegated beautiful color and i feel like i want to make a sweater out of this um i put some options together like for color combinations i've been getting um people asking me to compare colors side by side or um, to uh, they've asked um, like what colors they recommend so I think I'm gonna start trying to like recommend some with the new releases so this is ash blue and I think these are are great contrast and they go really really well together I also think you could even go um, this route I think that's pretty fun and this is the honey colorway um, even like the cinnamon spice, like a nice neutral. Um, I mean, there's so many options. If you are looking for a specific combination or if your pattern calls for two or three or four different colors, always reach out to me and I could, um, put a whole bunch of different combinations for you, send you pictures until you're happy with the combination that you like. And if it doesn't work out for you, then don't feel, um, I mean, don't feel obligated. So I, I don't mind doing that at all. 
Um, okay, another uh, color that came out is called Warmth. And so I just released this one yesterday morning and I love this one. It is exactly how the name suggests, very warm colors. Um, variegated browns, a little bit of like a, like a red brown as well and a little bit of yellow in there. It's just warm. <laughs> it's just warm and I couldn't figure out a name for it. Warmth, why not? Um, this I feel like would go really great together as well. This has like some brown speckles that complement very, very well. Um, I mean, this would go great together. This would go great together. Um, it's really hard to hold up three skeins. There you go. That would be really fun and beautiful, warm, like shawl, sweater. I mean, so many options. Um, and I'll really quickly, I'll show you, this is the same thing, but in DK. And as I've talked about before, DK takes up, um, the dye a little bit more like saturated, at least my DK base, because it is, um, a hundred percent superwash merino. And this is a 70, 75, 25 nylon blend. So it has a little bit of nylon. So this tends to be a little more saturated, if you could tell both beautiful in their own way and then the last color that um that i released yesterday which i had a really good response so thank you to everybody um this is called wicked and it is a very like a soft black color with white and mauve-ish undertones it's kind of hard to explain it's one of those colors that you just kind of have to see in person but I think it's just beautiful. I love it so much. This is the decay and this is the fingering. It's just beautiful. I love it, love it, love it. And it could go with so many things. It could go, let me get the fingering weight. It could go with warmth. It can go with honey even go with ash blue um probably even go with cinnamon spice and there's so many more i mean this is just a few that i pulled out but this just i'm so excited about it i love it so much so thank you to everybody who has reached out who has commented who has who has loved the um the new color releases i also try to um, post the shop updates on the Ravelry group. So make sure you um, head on over there and join the group. I just started a few weeks ago, um, but I'm trying to really um, interact more with everybody. And I have a thread on there for ask me anything. So if you have questions, ask me on the thread and then I will answer them in the next podcast video. Um, what else? The other, the last thing I wanna talk about is Kind of what I talked about last time are the bags. I have been sewing bags. You can see I have a mess back here. I was gonna put it away, but I thought I'd just be real. This is my craft room and I have been sewing a lot. I've been trying to perfect the bags that I want to sell and I am happy to announce that I will officially be selling them. I'm just working out a little bit more of the details. Um, and hopefully within the next few weeks, they will be released and I will have a small, medium and large bag to start with. If there are interests in a, an extra large bag, um, like a blanket size kind of bag, then I might um, look into that in the future. But for now, it's small, medium and large. Small is um, one to two skeins, I believe. Medium is two to four skeins and the large is four to up to eight skeins. Um, depending on how you want to stack them and stuff, but yeah, I'm really really excited about that and I wanted to share a few of them with you. So so I've been using them a lot and I'm trying them out. Um, but here is the small version and a lot of these are prototypes so they're not the final. Um, I'm not going to be selling these. These are just for myself and um, I made a lot of them slightly different shapes. So th these are not set in stone, um, just so you know. 
so this is one of them and this is I have stuff in there I've been using these <laughs> so there's pockets here there's there's three pockets do you want to go out did you want to go out I'm almost done so there's one and then I'm also going to be doing um, just one colored bags like this um, this is the medium size bag it's a very good size and let me see like if I do full skeins in here so that's three full like not obviously there's more room when you cake them but just to give you an idea um, that's the medium size bag okay and then the large bag I'm actually using for my sweat um, for my cardigan so just so you get an idea the medium and the large and then the small um, so this fabric I love so much and I like it with the yellow um, so there's that and then I also Here's another version, the leaves and polka dots. And I'm even gonna be doing this um, where you could hang, woo, where you could hang some stitch markers. Hey, hey, it's okay. So just a neat little feature. You could roll these down and you know be working on them and be using your stitch markers. So there's that. Here's another one, just a nice black with the yellow on the inside, just a little pop of color, I love that. And then, and then last is this one that I did. Now this one's a little bit different. We have the handles in the front instead of the side. Um, both great in their own ways. I can't decide if I want to carry both um, or just this one. I, I feel like I personally, I don't know. I've actually been using these a lot though. Um, I don't know Do, if you guys are still with me because it's been over an hour and I just noticed that. What do you prefer? Do you prefer like handles like this or to the side? Um, I'm not sure if I should release both. Um, there's just so many variations. I, I know that for the, the fabric, I'm just going to kind of switch it up um, as you can see this one the bottom I matched the top to the bottom and then this one I just um, I use the same fabric from here I think both look good I think I'm gonna do like variations of both kind of but when it comes to the handle that's the thing I'm not sure yet um, so we'll see if you have any um, preference leave it down below I'm curious um, but yeah that's that's this bag here and I love them they're just great to keep everything in. I made so many prototypes and I am using <laughs> so many of them. Okay, so I think that is all I have. If you're still with me, thank you so much because it, this has been a long podcast and I think my dogs are wanting me to be done already. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go and <laughs> I'm gonna go wind this up and cast on my new project, even though I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to. Again, don't forget to go over to Ravelry and join our group. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great night. Bye guys.